Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Batwoman Season 2. Today we're going to be breaking down Episode 2 and reviewing it as well. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So super exciting stuff, the second week of DC TV, Batwoman Season 2 Episode 2 was very good. I really enjoyed it, I didn't have any big problems with it at all. You know, maybe there's a few things that I'll bring up throughout the review, but pretty much solid episode, good way to continue off of the premiere. Javicia killed it once again. I think she's a great Batwoman. I think I even prefer her to Ruby Rose. And obviously they have to deal with the fallout of Ruby not being there, but I think they've done it pretty well. And this links into what happens at the start of the episode, and that is that Kate at one point crossed paths with Ryan Wilder. So the original Batwoman crossed paths with the new Batwoman, I think that's very fitting, and like last week's twist with Ryan's mum being linked to Alice, it's nice to know that they have crossed paths before, and I would have never thought that they would have done that, but I thought that was a nice twist to start the episode, obviously considering that a lot of the episodes so far, these two episodes, have been about what happened to Kate Kane, and people still kind of dealing with the fact that she's gone, and a big part of this episode was accepting the fact that Ryan is going to be the new Batwoman, and in episode 3 she's going to get a new suit and everything, so at that point they're going to be like, yeah, you're Batwoman for now, and what they say in this episode is, you can be Batwoman until Kate comes back, and they still kind of believe that Kate's coming back, well, some people. So, also at the start of the episode we find Alice in the sewers, she is with her friend Mouse, who is dead, and she puts a bat inside of him, and these bats have been infected with the toxin that killed Mary's mum, and nearly killed Mary. Okay, so let's move on to the next bit, so the crows interrogate Luke and Mary, so Mary's dad obviously interrogates her about Kate being Batwoman, and you know, them knowing stuff, and them not knowing stuff, and so they talk about the plane sabotage, what happened there, and then we move on to the kryptonite stuff, so the kryptonite is somehow seemingly still infecting her, yet that is the only reference to the kryptonite in the episode, when she feels her like shoulder or something. They pretty much ignore it, and they ignore the ending of the premiere where the kryptonite is literally going through her veins, it was led up to believe that something was going to happen with that, but literally nothing really happened with that, so I'm a bit confused why they made it a big deal, but maybe we'll get some sort of answer as we head into episode 3, which I think is kind of unlikely considering that they kind of skipped over it in this episode, and so at this point she fights a bunch of criminals, and she gets arrested because she was there, and the criminals get away, and the crows take her in once again, and so Sophie and Ryan, they know each other due to their old arrest, so all of these links are quite clever, I would say the writers are doing a good job at linking the characters. So the two of them know each other, they're going to cross paths lots more in the future, and so she doesn't believe she is a hero, but really, she was, and that was because of CCTV, so they don't believe her because of her potential past track record. And so Ryan knows Alice is Kate's sister, that is a kind of big revelation towards the start slash middle of the episode as she goes in and she's like, hmm, what is going on with Alice? There is some sort of connection and she figures it out. And so Alice at one point reveals that she doesn't think Kate's plane crashed and this was in the car scene. So with this, I wonder if there's an actual future where Kate actually does survive and if Ruby agrees to come back, maybe she does come back at some point, so I think the fact that they are leaving it up in the air and people are questioning, did she survive, while some people are saying, yes, yeah, she definitely died, definitely leaves it open for Kate to return, if she did in fact survive. And so it's at this point that the bat comes out of Mouse, Alice's friend, and Ryan, it's revealed, she's afraid of bats. That's a nice little nudge right there, which I had a giggle to. Okay, so moving on past that bit, Ryan shows up as Batwoman, and there is this Batwoman protest asking for the bat to come back, and so she's standing on the roof, she's kind of being instructed what to do, how to look like Batwoman. At one point, one of the people in the crowd notices that Batwoman's on the roof, and they all kind of go a bit crazy, and it's at that point Alice shows up on the roof, she faces off against the new Batwoman, Obviously, she doesn't know who she is under the mask, but she knows she's new, and then Alice tries to attack her, 
and Ryan admits that she's going to kill Alice. Obviously, Ryan knows who Alice is because of their connection. Alice killed her mum, so that's why she wants vengeance and she wants to go after Alice, and so they have this fight. I thought the fight was not that good. I thought the choreography was a bit weird. It didn't look like the punches were hitting or anything, so... Again, maybe this is the biggest flaw of the episode, but it's not that much of a big flaw because I can look past it because there was a lot of cool stuff in this episode. And so Batwoman gets attacked by bats on the roof. They are carriers for the toxin that killed Mary's mum. That was the big kind of revelation at that point. And so an obvious relation to the virus and what's happening in the world. Bats flying around, bats infecting people. You know, they've written this stuff during the pandemic, so, I mean, it's pretty obvious. But anyway, Batwoman gets into Batmobile. She leads the bats, following her, because she has the signal that is attracting the bats. That's how they came for her in the first place. And so, she gets into the bus. She tells the driver to get out. Well, it's not a bus, it's a crow security bus. And then she leads the bats into that bus, and, you know, she locks them in there. She throws a grenade underneath the bus and it blows up and she kills the bats. Again, is that environmentally very good? Probably not, but at least those bats had the toxin and I guess it gets rid of the toxin from infecting other people. And it's at just past this point that the team reveals, yes, Ryan, you can be Batwoman, but just until Kate returns. And so... Obviously, I think over time they're going to grow to like her as Batwoman, they're going to grow to like Ryan as a person as well, because they barely know Ryan, you know, they've only encountered each other, you know, on multiple occasions, and it seems like Mary is really rooting for her, and I think she will be kind of her biggest advocate, and I think Luke will come round to her being Batwoman very soon, but for now, yeah, she's going to be the main Batwoman, and people are going to know around the city there is a new Batwoman. And so that's very exciting that they are kind of embracing this. And so news report after this suggests new Batwoman is around. Like I said, I think people around the city are going to realize the real Batwoman, or the first one, the original one, is gone. But there is a new one. And I don't think they're going to be that bothered because remember, Gotham is used to lots of different versions of people like Batman and the Bat family. So you have Batgirl, you have obviously now Batwoman, you have Nightwing, Robin... So, I think they are pretty much used to all of this by this point. And then we go on and we find Kate's diary talking to Bruce. It says, Dear Bruce, and then she goes on to talk and she talks about meeting Ryan. So, this was on the day where she met Ryan and that was revealed early in the episode, like we mentioned before. And so, this was their first and only encounter and she talks about Ryan and, you know, the fact that she kind of reminds her of herself. And again, this is not Ruby's voice. I believe it may actually be Sophie's voice because it was last episode apparently. But it's kind of weird because normally when someone writes something down, they get the actor who is writing it to read it out. So, I mean, it's a bit confusing, but obviously they couldn't agree and get Ruby Rose back to do these voiceovers. And I mean, voiceovers can be done from home. They didn't need to bring her up to Vancouver or anything like that. So yeah, interesting that she hasn't come back for any of these when, you know, very obviously it could have been Ruby's voice. It could have been Kate's voice speaking. And the ending, you get Alice and you have Sophie and they are there together. Sophie puts her in cuffs and they're going to take her away somewhere. And then she stopped and there's all of this talk about the new villain, Sophia. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video and you did enjoy episode two of Batwoman. We're going to be breaking down episode three and reviewing it next week. Again, same time every week as Batwoman continues and we head towards the return of our other DC TV shows like Superman and Lois, which just got a trailer, go check out my last video, and also The Flash mainly, which is March 2nd, super excited for all the shows to come back, and I'm very happy that we've got at least one show on right now, and I'm loving doing the reviews and thanks for watching last week as well. But if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications to not miss any daily videos. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
icy room.